Coming up on this edition of the FRC Open Alliance Show, 9642INT Robotics. Well, they were on the FTC Open Alliance. They're also here for FRC as well, giving some of their updates on what they've been doing for the Rescape game. This team definitely, you would never assume this is a second year team. They are so well put together. It's going to be really cool to dive into what they're doing. Of course, we're talking about what they're doing on their robot so far, an update on their chassis. Uh, they have a lot of great stuff in CAD we'll be diving into, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, and some good concepts on what they're looking at doing for their climber, where they're getting inspiration from. We're talking about their ideas for a neural network and custom vision setups that they're doing as well, too. It's a lot of great stuff coming from INT Robotics out of New York. Let's learn more about their progress coming up here on the FRC Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. Let's welcome into the FRC Open Alliance Show. You might have seen them on the FTC Open Alliance Show, but they're back here for this as well, too. 9642 INT Robotics coming in from New York. Uh, awesome team that I can't wait to learn more about their progress. They compete weeks two and six as well, too. So, guys, I know a couple of you were on FTC Open Alliance Show. Welcome back. Why don't you reintroduce yourselves? Let us know what you do on the team, and we're going to hop right into everything we have to cover for your team today. Sure. My name is Andrew. I'm the co-captain of INT Robotics, and I cover CAD and Mechanical. I'm the other co-captain of INT. I cover programming, machining, and electrical. My name is Darius. Um, I'm the design and mechanical lead for INT Robotics, and my name is Eric. So starting off, we just want to go back to day one, pretty much. So once we saw the game, we immediately started creating a chassis. So we started with a 27 by 27 chassis. We got Versa on the CNC as quick as we could. And then we have a full test chassis, which we have video of uh, that you could put up. So this is actually new swerve modules that we have. They're a lot faster than their old ones and they're brand new instead of being used for multiple years. So it's great to drive with a new chassis and this allowed our programmer to get some testing early on in the season. Yeah, so actually just going uh, more in depth into the chassis because they're new, like uh, not just for us, but also across FRC. These are the West Coast products, uh, X2 Inverted. Uh, we're specifically using X3 gear ratio, I believe. Uh, we have the fastest gear ratio, but right now we have uh, we we're, we've geared them to second fastest gear ratio just because we want to see what it's all about. And you know, as the video shows, it's pretty damn powerful. And this is right now is without Phoenix Pro, so right now we're controlling our motors without um, field oriented control. And basically, what uh, using field oriented control will allow us to do is basically a 15% bump in acceleration. Uh, for a trade-off of slightly lower uh, terminal velocity, which we actually don't mind because when, we, uh, when we're when we taking like game strategy into account, specifically cycle times, this isn't a full field game um, like it has been in the past years where like, for example, in Crescendo, we don't have to go from our line station all the way over to the other side uh, to pick up from the human player station. Our human player station is just a couple of feet away from where we're going to score on the reef. So we'd actually rather have a higher acceleration because most of the time we're not going to be reaching terminal velocity or if we do, we're not going to be sustaining it um, for that long. So pretty much while Darius was working on the uh, programming side of the robot, the rest of us went to different teams. We're working on different intake designs, different climber designs, and different versions of the chassis as well. We have 27 by 27 and 27 by 28. And while people were very working on the uh, different intake designs, we came down to a couple. And same for climber as well. We have a couple main uh, and one that we're leaning towards. So we'll move into the, the elevator system as well, which Eric will talk about. Yeah, so kind of backtracking a little bit um, to our chassis. Um, so the test chassis that you saw in the video um, was a 27 by 27. Um, but after further discussion with the team, we decided to actually finalize with a 28 inch by 20 inch chassis. Uh, the reason for this was we didn't really see a, I guess, reason to go with such a large chassis this year as we kind of decided, oh, there wasn't many mechanisms that we needed to kind of cram within the space we have. And 20 by 28 we found was a kind of a perfect middle ground. And the size allows us to comfortably fit all of our mechanisms as well as have ample amount of space for electronics. And I guess kind of deep, uh, diving deep into our individual mechanisms. Uh, before we do that, I do want to take a second to kind of talk about our overall vision for our robot this year. Um, so when we were thinking about game strategy, we obviously wanted to kind of take on all the tasks. And I guess our elevator was going to be like the main, I guess, system that allowed us to do all that. 
And so the, in terms of the elevator, we decided to go with the internally belt routed elevator. And there was a couple of reasons for this decision. And one of the main reasons actually was the kind of the weight of it. It's much lighter than, I guess, your typical chain casking elevator that uses chain. Um, and this is kind of significant because we realized that this year we have less weight to work with. Um, and so kind of keeping that in mind, we we're definitely more mindful with our weight. And that's one of the reasons why we chose to go with the belt elevator instead. And I guess another reason was because of its low maintenance. Uh, once you kind of tense all the belts and kind of finalize everything, there isn't really much you have to do to kind of maintain it. It's low maintenance and allows us to kind of have an ease of mind when driving around. Something I want to ask you guys, uh, we were talking pre-show that you just got back from an FTC event, right? What is that like, that transition like going from FTC to FRC in terms of like, you know, the pacing or the strategy or anything like that? Like you, you, all, you all do both. So what is that experience like? How, how does that actually feel to go through that? So, you know, it comes with its ups, it comes with its downs. I think we're very much more organized as opposed to how we were last year or our rookie year because it was rookie year for our FTC teams and also for our FRC team. So that was very chaotic. We actually, we didn't get to where we are right now. Um, we didn't, like, start building until, like, a month, like, into build season. So right now, I think it's good. We've managed, like, uh, organize our times because we have uh, members of the FRC team who are native to their own FTC teams from schools that obviously don't have FRC teams. So uh, that's why they're competing with us in INT. But we found like we have a system that works. We found out a better method. And honestly, I think it actually is more beneficial, you know, besides just the time constraints that we have to like give up some weekends to attend our qualifiers and other competing events for FTC. It actually helps more because the things is from pro programming perspective, the stuff that I've done in vision for FTC, since I'm able to work at it from a smaller scale, it's still all the same concepts. Like everything I was talking about um, in the earlier segments of FTC open Alliance is stuff that I'm going to be implementing here in FRC. And that also, uh, at least from a mechanical side, Andrew contests to this, uh, the stuff that he's designed and stuff that he's built is also like, uh, similar to the stuff that uh, we could be seeing in FRC and definitely like the stuff that you could do on an FRC uh, FTC robot will more likely be uh, most likely be reflected on like an FRC robot that might be of a similar design. Yeah, I can't think of a better way to really prepare for both programs, honestly, and having that experience through that. So really cool. So all right, let's continue. What else do you want to cover? Right. So moving into our different intake designs, we came down to two main ones. And one of them, it pretty much has uh, two rollers on either side and is able to open and close to adapt to the game piece. And the other one is more of a static design. So pretty much it more so pinches the game piece, the, the algae, the larger ball, uh, when compared to the, the PVC pipe where it gets intake nice and snug and the, the algae gets pinched in. So there's two different designs. Um, they're pretty much the same type of concept. However, one of them is more adaptable to different types of tasks to maybe put up against. I might handle the ball easier. Uh, we haven't actually tested physically, and that's what we're going to get up to in the coming weeks. Uh, but pretty much, these are our different designs for in terms of CAD of our two intakes. And then if you want to move on to uh, climb or the elevator. Yeah, so this is our differential. Which Eric, it's on. Um. Yeah, so kind of another uh, mechanism we, we were playing around with was a differential claw. And we actually, I actually saw this um, kind of design on Instagram one day. Uh, it was a team using it, and they're using this similar to, um, kind of, uh, I guess, mechanism. And we kind of like designed like an elementary version of this. Um, we're still yet to test it, but we have high hopes because of its kind of comp like it's very compact, and we're able to kind of have two degrees of motion. We have up and down, and we also have 360 degrees around this axis right here. Yeah, so this is our kind of master assembly slash master sketch document. And here is where we do um, a lot of like the planning and where we'll eventually is, like visualize the final assembly of the robot. And so here is that kind of our master sketch. Um, our original, we decided to go with the elevator in the back. Um, and the, the belt elevator would go to all, I guess, four levels of the coral. I mean, the, what's the reef. The reef. And you can kind of see that here in the master assembly. Um, with this elevator we have, we're able to reach all four levels. So we have the top level here that would, we have that preset. And then when we need to go down, we would just simply kind of go down to the lower levels and so forth, so forth. And we also kind of decided to put the elevator in the middle. Um, as you can see before, we kind of had the original idea of putting it in the back, but because of like possible like weight distribution issues, we'd figure that, oh, having it in the center would always kind of establish that our center of mass is always near the center and would prevent like tipping. 
Yeah, and then just to specifically like reference a, a team we took inspiration from, because again, well, well, we do agree that uh, having the elevator pivot from the back would probably make for an easier time climbing because we have more leverage. Uh, we're just trying to think of like auto and tele up period as a whole. We don't want to have any sort of tippiness because we don't want to have to slow ourselves down just because of the fact that if we move too fast while we're like even slightly extended, we'll be tipping. That's not a problem that we want to deal with. But also, we've seen uh, two robots, at least in 2023, successfully execute like a similar concept, uh, 1768 and 3015 um, Robo Rangers, I believe, uh, where basically they had uh, a pivoting telescoping arm uh, in the middle of the robot. And what I really liked about this design, uh, obviously we're not going to be going with a telescoping arm. We're going to port it to uh, be compatible with an elevator. But what I personally liked about this design is that another goal that we had is that we wanted ground intake. Because while we do understand that in some games, uh, especially like uh, 2019 or Deep Space, uh, it might have come off as a deep, uh, as like a red herring, but I really don't think that's the case in this game, especially because of the fact that the human player stations are not protected. So at higher levels of, of gameplay, especially like at Worlds level, um, you're going to see people who are going to be playing some crazy defense on the human player station and want to be able to have an alternative where a human player just starts shooting out coral and they disperse in different directions. The The person that's playing defense isn't going to be able to keep up with all of them. And we have the capability to just like how 3015, all they did was pivot their elevator down. And because the intake and the claw that we'll have, will at least even if it's not through a differential or at least have one degree of motion where it can pitch itself up and down, we'd easily be able to pick up from the floor. And that wouldn't have to be a separate mechanism or anything like that. And it's already synergizing well of our pre-existing mechanism of you know having a pivoting elevator so is that um claw that you're designing or the the different options that you have are those looking at picking up both lg and coral uh yeah realistically speaking want to have uh something that can do LG and coral in the same uh the same string gotcha so yeah that'll be really interesting to see i, I agree with you i think floor pickups going to have a lot of viability uh in the game you, you mentioned like especially in later levels of it uh, i agree is the way the, met the meta evolves in this game uh, I think floor pickups can be a very valuable asset for teams to have as well, too. So, yeah, cool price. Um, anything that you guys have considered in terms of climbing or anything like that yet? Yeah, so we also have a couple of climbing ideas in mind. So uh, one of them is actually taken inspired from by, like, a Lego robot that we saw, like, very early in, in the build season. Um, and that one was pretty much using sort of like a, like a conveyor system where the actual cage lands on top of your robot and you're, are clasping onto it, pulling yourself up with that, uh, which we'll pull up real quick right now. And this was something that we all saw very early on. It was like an idea that now it has evolved into many different types where we use the same type of uh, like wedge idea. But just now, we since we have the elevator, which is on a pivot, we were able to have the ability to maybe use the elevator and have the actual clamp on the elevator to pull ourselves up uh, using that instead. So this is just a very early concept of something that we saw where we could take inspiration from. But now what we're moving towards is something uh, which you can go to the master uh, mm -hmm. sketch where we see um or if you have something on the back of the elevator that we have uh clamps where we can wedge and use the weight of the robot to actually passively clamp onto the, the cage and then we we're able to tilt ourselves using the pivot uh, from the bottom so that was our main climbing idea that we have for this robot and that's something that we're gonna get working on next uh since we have the elevator assembly and we have everything else everything just needs to be combined and put together and for your team, what is kind of the general time frame? Do you have certain deadlines that you're setting for your team? Or is it just one of those like, hey, by the time we get to week two, everything needs to be ready? What does that look like for INT? So for INT, uh, obviously, I think we uh, operate in a bit more of a unique way because we have to be very conscious of all of our the all the frc members which is like 70 80 percent of frc members who are come from an ftc team so for them their ftc competition doesn't end till like uh early march which is the same time as our week two event so we want to make sure that, that like our deadlines are playing nice with each other and we aren't um pushing people to prioritize one team over the other but for those of us uh, for those of us for, like, for example eric who are like strictly uh part of the frc team um we're able to like uh recognize these members and allow them to have bit more like uh lenient deadlines that are more oriented towards just frc so for example um we spent i'd say the first week with no like finalized prototypes we knew that we want to uh, we knew that we wanted a like internally rigged uh continuous bow elevator but we didn't know if we wanted to pivot we did a uh, stationary we want to pivot from the back middle so for example what he worked on wasn't necessarily the finalization of its placement on the chassis but more so the elevator itself so now what we have is that we can make the final decision of no matter whether we want it to be pivoting stationary uh middle or back we at least have the elevator and with like all the pulleys in place we have all these specific things and that was a deadline that he set for himself by then the week one that he reached and so now uh, as we're uh finishing up with week two and going into week three uh all the other cloud designs that you saw over there those were also a uh, week one to two deadlines that were made and so right now we're entering into the physical phase 
uh, phase where we sort of, we already know the design or the idea that we want to have behind our robot. And it's just more so like physically assembly and making sure that all the parts work together. And that's going to be sort of like a phase of week three to week four ish. Yeah, it makes sense in there. Um, want to ask you uh, in regards to anything you want to talk about for, uh, we were talking really about doing vision on your robot or anything from autonomous routines or anything like that. What do you want to wrap up with? Oh, yeah. So just wrapping up with sort of the software side of this, and this is what I handle. Um, I know that a lot, like teams uh, and like people are always saying that the more seconds you can shave off of a cycle, like the more cycles you gain at the end of the uh, like end of the match. I think this is the game that truly exemplifies this because um, with full site, like full, with a game with full field cycles, um, shaving off like one to two seconds of each cycle will only culminate in like one to two extra cycles at the end. But now that it's like like even less than half field cycles, you really notice the difference. So as a driver, I don't want to ever like end up in the situation where during a competition, during a match, everything I'm doing is manual alignment. We want to be able to line up to the April tags of the human player station. And then from that April tag to the next April tag um, at the reef, we want to have like an automated like sequence of scoring. And to that end, we want to be using like all the vision opportunities that we can use. So right now the vision setup that I'm going for is two Arducams um, with Orange Pi co-processors. Where we're planning to run full-time vision on whether it be uh, the Ardu cams or the Limelight. And then on the actual claw itself, we want to run a Limelight 4 with the Helio coprocessor because we want to run neural networks on the actual purple, uh, uh, like, branches of the reef itself because we want to sort of, um, sort of like, you know, how U UPS has, like, this sort of, like, last mile policy where they'll ship a package to you in whatever methods, but then when that last mile to actually bring it to your home, they hand it off to someone who, like, personally knows your neighborhood the best. want to be able to do that and want to use a neural network to know exactly the distance between, because the April tag, well, it's beautiful for rotation, the translational offset, but obviously, especially if we have to be like up flush against the uh, the reef to score, we're gonna need something else that's not relying on April tags, and that's where we want to have the um, the neural network come into play. And specifically, the reason why I want to use the Helio accelerator is because not only is it gonna help um, with the neural network, basically think of it: if the Limelight Three had the Google Coral, then the Limelight Four is gonna have uh, the Helio. And we already we have a, a Halo 10H. Uh, back at home that we can play around with. So we believe that by the time that the Limelight 4 and the Halos get shipped out, we already have like a lot of a sufficient background knowledge to actually implement this like as fast as possible so we can actually achieve what we're trying to do here. Well, I can't wait to see that, especially when we have you on next. Uh, if there's any progress for that, I think that'd be a really cool thing to look at and dive a little bit deeper into as well, too. So INT Robotics, thank you so much. Uh, by the way, I know it's FTC, but congratulations on your qualifier win uh, this past weekend on that front. We hope that translates into FRC for you as well, too, and you're off to a great start. Uh, so can we see your uh, new updates coming to your build log? So keep an eye out for that, and good luck the rest of the way. We'll see you back on here in just a couple weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu first to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information.